Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745, and we are really actually going to continue invading France. And of course, we're doing so as Germany playing Hearts of Iron Fours, Black Ice, and it is November 1940. So we are behind the historical schedule. We're conquering France. They're pushing down there nicely. Let's Let's cut off, hopefully, this peninsula here. Start that attack. You support the attack, but don't go into the location. Province. Right, okay. Um, let's send these two divisions into there. We are trying to cut off these few divisions pocket them up there that had been defending Paris falling back but these guys are in good shape uh, armor division there they're being produced ah. pressured there okay. um, you you also join the push to Dijon. Well, they're pushing rather hard. There, so let's see. If, I think a lot of these units are going to escape, but oh nope, some of those will, but others will not. We get the last few that are cut off. Looks like these guys are going to cut off the forces up there and maybe be able to hold. You continue to push. You come to here. You go join them. Totenkopf, you come attack here, and you also. Okay, very quickly advancing. Huh? Hell did Ireland get into this war? I just noticed the Irish flag down here. How the hell did Ireland get into this war? What are you guys doing, Black Ice? Yeah, I know. That's I know. It says it's a dominion. I mean, Ireland. In the nineteen third, in the nineteen twenties and nineteen thirties, some of theirs, Britain still had actual control of some of these um, ports or some elements there. It. it it was sort of a confusing, not clear um, situation, but I... Ireland is one of the few governments that when they hear of the death of Adolf Hitler, sends condolences to the German in, or German ambassador in Dublin. So um, now there are lots and lots of Irish that go vol go volunteer and join join the war. You know, in British units, not just the Northern Irish. Lots and lots of 
Southern Irish, who probably would be very willing to fight the British again if they were to try to take over the rest of Ireland, but somewhere between being young, adventurous men slash, uh, you know, I just want to get in on the action, slash um, anti-Nazis, anti-fascists, whatever, um, do go join um, the British Army and Irish units, and not just Irish units of either Catholic or Protestant nature in Northern Ireland, but, you know, just go join. And then there's things like the London Irish, because there's lots of people of well, whoever's citizenship, either Irish citizenship or English citizenship or whatever you want to call it, British citizenship, that are of Irish descent. So they're, you know, Britain's, you know, has a long history of ethnic-based units. So, yeah, um... Did we ever get those? Those now, those factories are just starting. Okay, so I don't want to increase my production of fighters, even though I need more desperately, just because we don't have enough factories for them appropriately. Well, what do we need? So I don't know. Um, Fighting Irish, yes, Star Streak. They release the Black and Tans early. I see. Yes, hello, Turn Low. Yeah. I, I could use more artillery, heavy and medium. So garrison equipment, that's just mostly obviously garrisoning things. Um, for garrison, for uh, units to garrison occupied territories. Oh, hey, yeah. Um, folk did a bit of a post about what I should change in. Well, maybe folk will show up. Who knows? Help me change my production. But I think what we'll do is just increase artillery here. I think we can do that painlessly, meaning I think we, have, we may need some tungsten along with steel. We have enough steel. I think it's going to be up here. Um, yes, medium artillery. Let's increase that by one. Hey, Toy Jet, how you doing? So that was surprising to me. Because uh, I was noticed these Irish flags, and I just want to make sure that they're Irish. Uh, it's... You... I'm going to go, it's... It's not a... It's a, it's a thing, in my opinion, you've got to really sort of w somehow war game out that the Irish would join the war. Um, I'm good. About to try out new... Well, cool. Hopefully you like it. Well, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Just complaining about things black ice-wise on the internet. How, you know, how much more fun can you get than that? So they're going to retreat out. These guys are coming across here. So all of you join that fight. Yeah, you can come here. Motorized unit can go there. And that can go there. They okay, across the river. We're cutting them there. Off hopefully soon. Okay, we push down into here. So let's put four divisions attacking there. One division just moving in to occupy there, and one division to go into there. And these guys here, you can march down this way, and you and you can join in the attack there. Okay, synthetic rubber refinery is possible. Very good, and Donier helicopters are aircraft. Okay, well, um... Just pasta sauce, no pasta. Mm, well, don't know if I like that terribly. I mean, you you know you can like it. But the good pasta, yeah. Okay, so synthetic rubber refineries, building that to help with the aircraft and particularly bombers and other aircraft that need it, um, and trucks and other things. Well, and they were told that maybe for timing wise, not ultimately whether doing it or not wise was maybe not the best move. What I think we're going to do is Luftwaffe expansion, yes. Um, you know, I should say next year. 56 days, get some innovation. Nice, but 
Lower Austria gets an uh, air assembly plant, and we could use a few of those. So uh, we're going to take that. Okay, so this... And I really do like the idea of these sort of design bureaus. If you will, where to put our aircraft designing guys and what to have them do. I'm not going to just design everything either because I could or or, or per, bill or you know just because they designed them historically whether they put them into production or not is another or significant production is another case and they're cool and all the different designs I like that kind of stuff okay so basically we're moving into 41 and we're getting there nearly um yeah let's do bigger get those going hey beam slam i have sausages for pasta sauce mm, yeah okay i don't know if you you heard my talk about denmark uh shortly ago on the stream but um you have meatballs okay meatballs yeah meatballs pasta sauce all right well what we're going to do is start you attacking here with the 5th. And we're going to send these guys down, hopefully, very fast. Well, I guess some more. I don't know if they're going to send them into that push. Can you come down to here. You guys start crossing that river because we got some guys coming that way. Just arrived. Well, um, maybe check it out um, when the episode goes up. It'll be listed as a special episode more about Czechoslovakia, but I did talk about Den Denmark in World War II. And Toyjek can close his ears for a second, and I said very, very positive things about it. Denmark in World War II. Okay, good. So we are now here. Let's see. you support that. I think punching against well, just some light tanks. May not be the best thing there. They're, they're punching there, so we're going to try to close whatever pocket we can there. And you guys will support that. The Norway. How's Norway? Norway's doing just fine. Norway may, Norway may get the Swedish treatment this war. You know, we'll see about that. Well, if you want to go back and listen to it, Toy Jet, you might be surprised. It looks like there's nobody occupying that province. So let's go there. No good. We got more horses here. Um. Let's face it, Hoi 4 really has no point in taking no way for Germany. Yeah, um, that, you know, there's actually, I just noticed a few hours ago when I was looking around this, because I, quite honestly, I have not, you know, I'm not an expert on black ice currently uh, at all, but, you know, I, I am, at least of the older versions on Hearts of Iron 3, I would call myself an expert. But looking down here, yeah, you can either do Operation Tannenbaum and take over Switzerland or or come in a treaty treaty with Switzerland. So um I'm not exactly sure what this German Swiss trade agreement will give you the effect here. Um but uh here 
if you get down here, you get, um, cause we're having stability. Well, it's going up slightly here and it's again, Heinrich Himmler gives way negative stability that I don't think he should. I think, he, I think the, the SS was a stabilizing factor on the whole. Um, but here, um, use Swiss banks. Stability up 5%, gain Swiss banks, which daily political power and consumer good factories reduce. So if you get down far enough into here, you can have a benefit for not invading Switzerland. Where in a lot of, ga a lot of games, it just... Switzerland just sits there like a lump and doesn't. Factories. Oh, factories. Yeah, well, there... Well, I don't know in the game how many factories there are or not. And um, the, quest the question really comes down to, and you know, why invade? Now, there's reasons why Germany invades. France and Britain were, you know, sort of kind of getting ready to invade themselves. Um, looks like the Soviets aren't doing too well. They might lose Leningrad soon. Uh, um but, um, you know, whether I would say that if you could keep all year round Swedish steel showing up in Germany and up here, particularly the summer is a short time period. Um, of course, now most of my Norwegian friends live way down here. But I know they're a little more familiar than I am with, with conditions up here. Um, summer is very short. Now, they can work all year round on mining and steel manufacturing. But transporting it across here, I guess the snow, even if you try to clear the snow levels, you know, clear clear the railways, it's just going to snow again in a few days. It just makes it functionally impossible to move um, the iron from wherever up in here in Sweden down to the coast. And that may even these ports, because I know like, um, uh, you know, back in the 18th century, the ships would get um, frozen in here, wooden ships. And this was just literally, um, I don't know how far out into it, but miles or kilometers to Europeans would just be frozen over like with six or eight feet thick of ice in and around um, at that time St. Petersburg in the 18th century. Now it was colder in the 18th century than it is in the 20th century and I don't know if that affects this. So I'm presuming that this very well could be things like that happening. It could even be that the, the trains sort of kind of run but it's the port that's frozen up and there isn't enough trains or whatever to get it down to here. So had the Germans thought that they would get year-round Swedish steel coming down, Swedish iron coming down, they might not have invaded because, yeah, and realize also, um, the Rigger Brigade was unstable for it. Why even bringing that up, Airy? I'm, I mean, they're, they're, they're just out of control. Um, uh, bandits, but what's the point of bringing this up? Yes, uh, I. They're just a, a criminal unit. I I don't know. We we're not even talking about them. We're talking for Germany. That unit is created what in forty four or forty three. It has a brief life existence. It is used murderously on the East. It is never, we're talking German national stability, not stability of occupied territories, not anything like that, just German national stability. And so I would say the SS very much is a stabilizing force in Germany for national stability. Because we're not talking about, you know, stability in other areas. So, um, um, I don't think so. Um, I don't know what you're looking at there, Ari. And I would also say that nobody in Germany knew what was going on with them. 
you know, I'm not saying some intel people or, or whoever. I'm talking the populace, the public. So, yeah, and they weren't rampaging around in 1940. So, and um, I think, I don't think any of the, I, I think very few of the, the, the members of that unit qualified for SS membership. They were um, uh, a penal battalion run by the SS is how I would describe them. And I've read a bit about them, but it, yeah, it's probably 20 plus years ago since I really read about them. Um, so I'm sure I'm getting some details wrong, but I don't think they were founded at least, at least as the organization that I know of and not just what that guy. Um, and I think you have the, they're wearing your, okay. How far are France is from surrendering? Well, we can take a look at that in a moment. But, okay. Um, where was I? Yes, hello, um, Arno over on Rumble. And kick, I'm alive over there. Okay, man. Um, oh, Norway. When the decision to invade Norway is taken, the German army... The German military high command, I should say, not just the army, is very unsure about the idea, and we'll get to Arno's surrendering, about the idea of de defeating France, because they failed to defeat France, you know, in World War I. So they're seeing the Norwegian coast as a... Um, you know, ability to get out past British blockades, because especially the Kriegsmarine can't, you know, in World War One. I'm not saying if the high seas fleet sailed out here, couldn't somehow sneak past um, the, the British fleet coming out from Scapa Flow to intercept it and break out into the Atlantic. But then what? It's coal-based. It needs, needs lots of refueling. I don't know the, the legs or how long you know, um, the German fleet is designed to be at sea, you know, how much food they carry, how much coal they have on board. Um, I know they're not set up for um, underway refueling. So once they go out here, they got to find a place that'll, you know, let them refuel. So, um, you know, but they still feel trapped where if you're looking, you know, and even then, you know, they are putting out U-boats that do get around, but having U-boat bases here seems like a good idea. But a lot of that honestly goes away once France collapses and you can just have your U-boat bases out here. And yeah, okay, it does sort of kind of help to surround Britain by going out from Norway here and whatnot. And once you take out, once you take out France... Is Norway really going to um, stand up to the idea that um, no, Germany, you can't, we're, we're going to stop shipping uh, steel through to you? Because I am sure the Norwegian government would um, give in on that point and force the British to not, you know, effectively intercept or whatever shipments along the coast down, down into Germany. Um, I, th and especially when Britain is on its own, um, I think they would not want to, um, force Norway into the position which would allow not for a German occupation of Norway, which would maybe too unacceptable to Norway, but um, German use of, say, a few air bases around to patrol the seas uh, and other sort of, you know, minor military ins installations, again, not occupation troops, but to protect 
the neutrality of of the Norwegian waters or something that you know once Germany pushes down into here. So I don't know, you know, compared to the amount of men and material, yes, you know, talk to Eric, who's really sort of, um, you know, who plays War Thunder with us, who is Norwegian, uh, just for those of you who don't know, um, has really sort of gotten into, one, it's a really good tank, is the Panzer III N, the little short-barreled 75 millimeter version of the Panzer III, late version. And part of it is, and it's a really good tank, but also part of it is, is emotionally is that Norway continues to use those after World War II because they're sent up by the German Panzer Division. There is at least one German Panzer Division that's before um, before D-Day. A German Panzer Division is is part of the, um, and there's other divisions, part of the anti-invasion setup because you don't need a Panzer Division just to occupy Norway. Um, now it's, again, the so it's using, you know, mid-war tanks late in the war. It's, you know, a second-rate panzer division. But that panzer division very well either could, would have been useful here or useful on the, the, the Russian front and all that other stuff. So, you know, all the other equipment and manpower that it would have been better for Germany not to invade Norway than it is to invade Norway, in my opinion. So... Why take Norway? I, I, you know, other than just simply Bismarck. Uh, hello, Jetton. Bismarck on Norway convoy escort duty. Well, I don't know that you would want the Bismarck doing that kind of stuff. And I, I'm sort of envisioning the idea of, you know, Britain not sending in significant surface vessels to stop coastal shipping, but maybe sending in... Mm, you mean there are ships that are blowing up? Well, we have nothing to do with that. You know, meaning submarines lurking around the region and, and very quietly sinking shipping um, and probably using, you know, collaborators on shore to know which ships are full of iron ore and which ships are, well, some of them might be obvious as ferries or something that are, you know, local personal transport or whatever, not wanting to really disrupt Norway itself. How hard is this mod? Hello, Nevroy. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. it. It takes a bit of learning to do it. I'm, I, it's, it's a bit of a steep curve, and I'm still learning it. Um, this is the first time that I've played this modern of a version. I played versions of it a couple of years ago, but it's, I'm sort of coming back to it for the first time. So shell the howling noise that looks out the hood is still haunts me. Okay. Um, the algorithm is a fool, the British. Okay, let's see. Didn't they invade Norway for heavy water? No. Hello. I haven't seen you here before. Um, Ferocious Asgard. Hope I'm getting that right. Um, no, that, that, I, in 1940, I don't, I don't think heavy water in the nuclear program is on any any decision maker's mind. I'm not saying there weren't scientists working on things. What I'm saying is the decision makers weren't thinking about that in 1940. So um, nickel was the primary reason, if memory serves. Well, what it was is, um, in my opinion, is because we really don't know. That's, that's just... My God, people, there is so much we don't know. And I say we because um, I've read books and articles that by people that should have been able to look into it if, um, if it was out there and published. Swedish steel from a few mines up here, then, and it's refined and it's turned into steel up here is incredibly good. And I guess they just mined enough of it out before anyone, you know, post world or post world war 2 that anyone really got in to look at what it was made up of. It is thought to maybe have tungsten or maybe nickel or something in it naturally to be an alloy naturally that makes it very hard. 
And so in this game, and I will say, and it wasn't just me, but it was several people talking about um, with uh, the developers here, um, what it should be. So there is appreciably no tungsten in Sweden. They have tungsten in this mod. They have tungsten in the base game. Because we, and again, it's not just me, but I was part of the, the discussion group, and we collectively all agreed that from everything, and again, multiple people reading stuff over the years contributing to this, including, I, damn, I forget who, one guy was doing a really good at coming up with, um, uh, and I, I helped him a little bit too, coming up with locations and uh, of various resources, you know, where to find, where chromium was being actively mined. Not where we know about it today, but where they knew about it back then and actively going after it then. And so um, really looking, digging into to the, to the resources. They really tried to do with the, um, uh, um, with trying to do the resources well. They really tried. And they outsourced some of it to 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 a few people um, that really did the digging. And I I just contributed a few things here and there. Yeah, I'm tooting my own horn. But uh, so I sort of know the decision. So it was this decided that this steel is the same type of steel that you would get if you take tungsten and mix it with um, you know iron based steel. I mean, a steel is is iron and and basically you know coal. Um, gotten together to make like machine tool cutting parts you know the 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 drill bits the you know whatever like that or other hardened like for gun barrels or the gun barrel lining on like large artillery pieces and other things that you would normally need to get tungsten to add in to create the the, the tungsten steel alloy that this steel basically functions there and so the, this tungsten, this steel really isn't here um, naturally. It's just the steel that comes from here makes up for not having tungsten. And again, from the the reading that I just you know and some of the other people pointed out some of the articles, they really don't have like good samples of the original to go in and see what it what it really was an alloy of that made this steel and it's all the main veins of it i guess are all played out um up here so it, this is a shall we call it a tungsten substitute on a national basis you know what you need very hard steels for this steel comes as opposed to what i call junk steel um like the rebar steel in all of the the bunkers you don't care about the quality of that steel you just you just want some sort of steel you know um trigger guards and butt plates on rifles. You don't care about the quality of steel. You care about the quality of steel on a rifle for its barrel. You care about, like, for the springs in the, the gun. You know, that needs to be certain qualities of steel. But just just mass-produced steel, it doesn't really, you know, quality doesn't matter that much for a lot of a lot of functional purposes. And so, yeah, some, some really high-end, really specific needs does need tungsten and not this, but sort of on a substitution base for, and we're looking at mass economies, not particular niche uses, this works for a substitute. So um, that is what Germany wanted to get and what they were worried about um, Britain cutting off. And Britain was considering cutting off again after considering invading Norway um, to help out Finland in the Winter War. Um, earlier. So um, I would argue, like I think it is better for Germany not to invade Sweden, because Sweden as a, I don't know, it, and it may vary, and there's definitely elements within, significant elements within Sweden, not enough to really like taking over, but significant elements that are pro-Germany, pro, pro-fascist pro or pro-Nazi. Um, there are they exist, but so whether it's a friendly neutral or just a true neutral in the idea, eh, you know, if Britain showed up and wanted to load up a bunch of steel or something, we'd sell to them too, but they can't, so we're selling to Germany. 
you know, if Norway sort of had that basic setup, I think it's so much better for Germany not to, and, and that includes invade um, Denmark. You just don't need to. Once you get this coast of France here, it's just a, a not need to, and it'd probably be better for it. Iron from Kruna during winter and air and naval bases, absolutely. Um, so that's much more reason there. Shiny silver tanks. Yes, cool, Jet and Yet. Um, when is the earliest you make Tiger tanks? I don't know, Arno. And um, you wanted to see, because we were talking about France and surrendering here. Um, uh, uh, where do we... I'm not used to looking at this because it either is going to happen or it's not going to happen. Um, not going to do that. I know a lot of you guys know this. I just never look up. Uh, generally, stuff was made to last. Ah. Uh. Uh, long time in winter and wartime production, they build an expected lifetime for equipment. Yeah. Well, the Germans, I would say, built as if it was peacetime. They're, they're looking at, they want to have a tank functional for 20 years, 30 years, instead of just getting grinded. The mod is, um, I don't know how difficult it is to play, but it's a bit difficult to learn. Hello. Edrao, I'm probably butchering that, um, but it takes a bit. Example, Emmy pre-war production did not hold a match longer than wartime models. Did not hold much longer than wartime models. Yeah, I, I know. They, no, they got used up very fast just because combat losses. I don't know. I mean, if Arno, if you can tell me where the sur surrender production or progress for France is, I'll gladly look it up, but I don't know where it is. I normally don't just care. I'm just going to defeat them. 